that, um, you know, I am a citizen, uh, I, as I mentioned at the very beginning of all that, I, I, I do have the, um, the, the right to vote. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, this year, I was, I'm, I'm very disappointed because I was looking forward to uh, uh, voting for either Tulsi Gabbard or Bernie Sanders. Those were my candidates, but uh, they turned out to be huge disappointments. Uh, and now we're stuck with uh, Joe Biden. Uh, and if you're unaware of who Joe Biden is, uh, he's a dementia patient running for the president of the United States of America. <laughs> now, this is not Joe Biden's first run for America's big boy chair, you guys. Uh, he's actually lost three other presidential races uh, uh, across uh, the, the space uh, time uh, that he's been around, right? And uh, I want to go back to uh, one run from the year 1988, uh, where he ran for uh, president of the United States and kind of got into a little bit of trouble. So uh, here we go. Let's, let's watch this news cycle. Democratic presidential candidate Joseph Biden today faces a controversy. Three weeks ago at a debate at the Iowa State Fair, he used phrases identical to those delivered by British Labor Party leader Neil Kinnock. Biden seemed to be claiming Kinnock's vision and life as his own. Why is it that my wife is sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college? Why is Gladys the first woman in her family in a thousand generations to be able to get the university? My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football. Eight hours underground and then come up and play football. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. There was no platform upon which they could stand. Now, the easy thing that Joe Biden could have done here uh, to make it not look like plagiarism and his speech stand out a little bit is during that football party could have just been like, now I'm talking about good old fashioned American football, not that namby pamby <laughs> pussy shit from Europe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's play the sport with our feet, as the name suggests. Not my ancestors, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but Joe Biden is a professional politician, right? So I am sure that his response when he got caught plagiarizing somebody else's speech uh, was to handle the apology uh, with grace. The notion that every thought or notion or idea you'd have to go back and find and attribute to someone, I think is, quite frankly, uh, ludicrous. I should have said, to paraphrase Neil Kinnock, it's the only time I didn't, in all the times I've ever used it. You sure? Are, are we sure that that's the only time that he's done this? Reappeared in the New York Times with a new charge, that Biden had appropriated a famous litany from the late Robert Kennedy about what the gross national product cannot measure. It cannot measure the health of our children. The health of our children. The quality of our education. The quality of their education. The joy of their play. Or the joy of their play. Uh, after that, Joe Biden at the end of that speech said that he was assassinated. Uh, <laughs> 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 but to keep that plagiarism train rolling, uh, and to get that Christian vote, he did say that he was uh, resurrected three days later. So, <laughs> so he was killing it. <laughs> but okay, look, I, I get it. Maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh on the man, right? Campaign speeches are very hard. It's very stressful to be on the road. Uh, you know, but I, I really doubt that there are any other instances uh, where Joe Biden would have plagiarized something and then reacted very shitty to it after he was caught. Joseph Biden admitted today that he committed plagiarism when he was in law school. He said it was a mistake, but that it was unintentional. He quoted five pages of someone else's work without proper citation. I've done some dumb things, and I'll do dumb things again. He was given an F. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I've been dumb. <laughs> this guy in. I, don't, I, didn't, I never thought I would agree with Joe Biden, but when he says that he's been dumb, <laughs> fucking nailed it. You guys, <laughs> here we are. Went to law school on a full academic scholarship. The only one in my in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and, in fact, ended up in the top half of my class. 
I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only need 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like. And my dad, I, I can fight all of your dads, by the way. I can kick all of your dad's <laughs> ass. Uh, who wants some of this? Okay, He's my resume done. alone can kick your ass, you punk bitches. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yeah, I mean, that's a very impressive academic record, I got to say. Uh, so, you know, with somebody with, the, with that kind of academic record, uh, there is no way that they would uh, ever lie uh, about anything like that. Right. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Secur Syracuse Law School. I mean, this guy comes off this whole thing as a flyweight. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been dumb. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, uh, that last part about his memory failing him is called foreshadowing, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but and, like this video here just basically shows like how everything about Joe Biden is basically fraudulent, right? Even the moniker of being average Joe is false because he was at the bottom of his class. <laughs> He's like below average Joe. <laughs> now, with that in mind, you know, I, I think what we can do is since, since Joe Biden has a, a problem of being honest, uh, and issues with the truth, uh, I decided uh, that we can decode some of the truth behind some of his uh, latest tweets that he posted up uh, over the last week. Uh, I thought maybe I could, I could clear up some of the messages that, he, uh, that he's trying to get out there. So the first one says, I've always believed that we've been at our best when we've acted as one America. This crisis is an opportunity for us to be that nation again, that there's not a single thing we cannot accomplish uh, if we do it together. Uh, translation, no, I don't mean Medicare for all. I will be towed the shit out of that. <laughs> now, I also don't mean that strike business. That's all bullshit. Okay, look, if you want to strike, you're fired. Together doesn't mean unite as a people. More uh, just do what the rich tell you to. You know, they know better. And they always have. Look, it's not about being smart because poor people can't be smart. You have to purchase <laughs> intelligence, okay? Don't organize. It just makes you look dumb. Look, when I say one America, I mean more an America that will just listen to me unequivocally and not question what I'm saying or doing. One America under Wall Street with profits and riches for some, period, period, <laughs> period. <laughs> It's my best Joe Biden impression. <laughs> uh, this next one's a bit of a long one. Uh, it says, a, press, a free press is essential to a free society. That's why attacking the press in an attempt to intimidate independent media is a standard part of the authoritarian playbook around the world. And it's why Donald Trump's effort to demonize the media put us in such a dangerous path. Trump deflects legitimate questions with attacks. He bullies members of the press instead of taking responsibility for his failures, his efforts to undermine public confidence in the integrity of reporting, uh, violate our core values, and threaten our very system of government. This hashtag World Press Freedom Day, a support for independent press at home and around the world matters more than ever. We must vote Trump out this November and assure that the attacks on our free press are never acceptable uh, never again acceptable, especially not in the White House. Uh, translation, fuck Julian Assange, period, <laughs> period, <laughs> period. <laughs> but look, Biden is right here, right? You have to respect the press, especially uh, when they call you out for something that you've done. There's no way that Joe Biden uh, has ever been condescending or rude to the press for doing their job. The notion that every thought or notion or idea you'd have to go back and find and attribute to someone, I think is quite frankly uh, ludicrous. I should have said, to paraphrase Neil Kinnock, it's the only time I didn't in all the times I've ever used it. 
Okay, I get it. Maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh, right? Maybe it's not all major Democrats that are this rude and defensive towards the press, right? What about maybe maybe somebody uh, w with a little bit more uh, feminine charm, right? Maybe a matriarchal aspect of leadership will present a more poised uh, uh, response to the tough questions. Just calm down. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is the last tweet that we'll look at, uh, and uh, Joe Biden tweets, in the time of crisis, the American people deserve a president who would tell them the truth uh, and takes responsibility. Donald Trump has not been that president. Translation, now sure, I went into hiding because my dementia was acting up, uh, and I had to use all of my manliness to pretend that it doesn't exist. You don't need a president who would divert blame but one who will run away and then divert blame <laughs> on maybe, I don't know, a woman. I mean, uh, 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 I'd rather not finish the rest of this. Period, <laughs> period, period. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been dumb. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so... There you have it. That's the, that's the Joe Biden section of the show, you guys. The obligatory Joe Biden section of the show. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this clip. If you enjoyed this clip, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. You hit the like button. Make sure that you share this content out. Usually content like this, this anti-establishment comedy content is not uh, shown to as many people uh, as it possibly could be. It does get suppressed quite often. So uh, if you can hit that share button, get the word out there uh, and tell folks that you enjoyed this video. And if you want to be a part of a live virtual comedy show, the next live virtual comedy show, the next Citizen Revolution comedy show is going to be on May 22nd. Uh, tickets are available for that right now. And then they'll be, um, they'll be happening every Friday uh, at 9 p.m. So tickets are available for these shows at krishmohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N.com. And you got to get your tickets uh, because that's how I'm going to be able to send you the Zoom login information so you can attend the show and we don't get any unwanted visitors in the Zoom show. So like I said, the next one is on May 22nd. Grab your tickets and we'll see you there. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.